Hey folks, welcome to problem 601 on Lead Code. It's the sequel interview problem. It is a hard question. It's called Human Traffic of Stadium. Let's get into it right away. We're not gonna have a complicated solution. It's actually a very straightforward solution. So I'm gonna walk you through it. So hopefully by now you've read the problem, uh, but we do have a table called Stadium. And what we need to do is return uh, a data set where you can see all of the, uh, you know, all of the results uh, such that we have three consecutive IDs appearing one after the other. And of of course visit date is the primary key so that's the unique identifier so let me kind of walk you through uh, this solution so effectively we're gonna be putting together a list of all the records that have a consecutive uh, ID well how do we do that so we are gonna use uh, a, a window function here but in my case I'm gonna use row number I'm not gonna use the lag or leak function let me show you exactly what I mean so uh, just to show you an example here's how this would work so if we had a list of IDs and you know just in the real world, you might have one, you might have three, you might have six, and then right after six, you might have seven, eight, and then 10, for example. So as you can see here, uh, the six, seven, and eight is consecutive. We don't have a nine, so that's where that breaks. So essentially, how do we, how do we identify that we have three I consecutive ID records? Well, if we make use of the row number function, um, and that's going to give you a unique identifier for each row, but it's going to give you uh, a sequential ordering of IDs as you go down. So effectively, this would be row number one. This would be row number two, row number three, so on and so forth. So I'm just going to fill this in, right? So this is going to be my IDs down here. This is going to be my row number. And well, how does that help us find the consecutive IDs? Well. What if we take the difference, right? So if we take the difference between uh, the ID and the row number, what do we get? For So for this first example here, the first row, one minus one would give us zero. And obviously that's not, that's not consecutive, right? Because you go from one to three, but let's see what I mean. So what is three minus two? It's one. What's six minus three? It's three. What's seven minus four? It's also three. What's eight minus five? It's also three. What's 10 minus six? It's four. So looking down here, you see that we have three, three, and three. What is that doing? That is helping us identify the, the records that have a consecutive um, ID essentially, because we're taking the row number, we're subtracting it from the ID, and that's how we're able to identify um, exactly which rows are consecutive. So. Let's build our solution. So I'm just going to comment this section out, just it was just to kind of demonstrate what I mean. And let's build our solution. So we're probably going to first have a subset of data. We're going to have a CTE. So I'm going to pull uh, basically everything, right? So we just have three records. So pull everything. But then in addition to that, I want to take the difference of ID and I want to subtract this column right here. How do we how do we set up that column? How do we um, essentially we generate that column well it's just going to be the row number function so row number over and we're not we're not partitioning by anything or anything of that nature so it's just going to be row number within parentheses and that's about it um, at some point it might it might help to maybe put um, order by visit date just to make sure it's in the same order but at this point in time it's not necessary so this is effectively going to give us this last column here. So we're going to name this something like uh, difference between IDs, right? You can name it anything you want. And we're pulling from the stadium table, of course. Pull from stadium. Um, and we're going to wrap this as a CTE. So with CTE differences as, and that'll be, that'll be my subset right here. So now we've identified, or not really identified, we've really, we're just pulling the same table, but we're appending this last column here. So at this point, we at least know that um, anything that's consecutive will have the same difference. So for instance, this three, three, three indicates that we have um, three, three records that have uh, the same difference between ID and row number. Now moving on. So effectively what we can do is we can take a count. So we can group by this column right here. So if we group by that column right there, we'll, we're gonna see that three is gonna have a row count of three because there are three rows 
with a difference of three. So we can use that to identify all of the IDs um, that have a consecutive consecutive three rows or more. Uh, and I do, that just reminded me, actually there's gonna be a where filter here because we wanna ensure that um, we're pulling records that have uh, at least 100 people or uh, at least 100 people greater than or equal to 100. So where people is greater than 99. So I'm gonna stop rambling and I'm just gonna kinda of get to the solution now. So uh, we're gonna pull the ID visit date and people from the CTE where, right, where the, where my diff IDs, and this is where it's very important. So how do I know which records I wanna pull? How do I know that I wanna pull these records where I see the three, three, and three? Well, if we group by this last column, if we group by the diff IDs, and we see that there are three or more rows with the same ID, that's how we know those are the records we wanna pull in. So in our where, in our where clause here, we're gonna be pulling the diff IDs, where diff ID equals, give me a list of diff IDs within the CTE, right? Group by diff ID. So now we're grouping by, so I'm gonna basically have a row for the ones and the zeros and the threes. Group by that and having, having count of rows. So my total count for each given diff ID should be three or more, or in other words, should be greater than two. Now that should give us what we want. Let's go ahead and run that. I'm gonna actually remove this comment here. I'm gonna remove that comment and I'm gonna run this. Looking good and we'll submit that. And I got an error message. And the reason why is because this subquery returns more than one row. So to ensure that we're doing this correctly, we're gonna have to use the in operator here instead of just the equals because we're gonna be pulling in multiple records. So my mistake there, gonna hit run again and submit. And we did it. Hope you guys found this helpful. Be sure to comment down below if you need any clarification. I'll be glad to help you out. Be sure to subscribe. And as always, I'll see you on the next one. Thank you for your time.